Fei Pinying Jiang. Chapter 72 No Regrets The Palace of Bright Sunday Li Chen pointed to a region on a map. The coastal region of Jiadong has a pleasant climate and abundant natural resources. We have prepared an estate there for fourth brother. What does Imperial Mother think? With an ashen complexion, Empress Dowager Zhou said, Jiadong is barren. And the coast just has fishing villages. What's good about this? Suer is your full-blooded younger brother, yet you put him in such a place. With a neutral expression, Li Chen said, Then where has Imperial Mother taken a fancy to? Liaoning Province, she replied, not thinking it over. A smile spread across Li Chen's lips. Imperial Mother, Liaoning Province will make for an easy and comfortable living. One would fear it would make him lazy. There are pirates in Jiadong. One does not have a comfortable and easy living there, but if those pirates act recklessly and go ashore, what's to be done for your fourth brother? Fourth brother is well read. He can teach the common people. The heart of Empress Dowager Zhou chilled. After hearing those words, she recalled when Cheng Sija had led Suer astray in the northwest but even the previous emperor did not punish Suer. Now, the current emperor wants to settle old accounts? But who didn't scheme to get their hands on the position of crown prince? Suer had already lost the struggle for the throne. So why was the emperor unwilling to give him a way to survive? However, if the emperor started to act against his brothers not long after the previous emperor had died, Empress Dowager Zhou wouldn't watch on helplessly as it happened. Li Chen watched Empress Dowager Zhou, waiting for her response like before. She coughed lightly. Said, we can talk about this later. Emperor, you don't have an empress at the moment. There is no one to manage the imperial harem. Although it's still during the national mourning period, it's fine if you choose a young miss for marriage after this period. Li Chen glanced at her and smiled. Which young miss has imperial mother taken a fancy to? There isn't anyone appropriate by your side. This grieving one is always worried. Your maternal grandfather's household has a young girl, 15 years old. It's the best age. This girl is sweet-tempered and virtuous, with a magnanimous bearing. She is an appropriate pick for an empress. If you think she is suitable, she will come and pay respects to this grieving one on another day. Just have a look at her. In two months, your mourning period will end, and we can bring her into the palace. In a dull manner, Li Chen said, fourth brother doesn't have enough children. The family of his princess consort gave birth to such a vermin like Su Yuan. It's clear the Su family's teachings are poor. Since the Zhou family's daughter is sweet-tempered and virtuous, we will pass on an imperial decree soon to make her fourth brother's secondary consort. Once the national mourning period is over, they must go to Jiadong immediately. Empress Dowager Zhou's complexion darkened again. We won't hide it from imperial mother. We have already decided on an empress. Oh? Then which of your secondary consorts is it? Or is it a well-bred young lady from another family? She already knew that the Lan family had a maiden of marriageable age. If the emperor chose someone from that family as his empress, wouldn't he be even more close to the Lan family? Then, before she died, the Zhou family would fall. Indifferent, Li Chen said, regarding this matter, grandmother has already agreed. Empress Dowager Zhou's heart tightened. Sure enough, it had something to do with the Grand Empress Dowager. If the other party wasn't there, then she herself could borrow the excuse of filial piety to make a request from the Emperor. However, in the presence of the Grand Empress Dowager, she was a daughter-in-law after all, and must follow her mother-in-law's wishes. A moment later, Empress Dowager Zhou asked, Which young lady of the Lan family is it? Bring her to the palace on another day. Imperial Mother will have a look at her to see if she's suitable. Li Chen shook his head. It's not a daughter of the Lan family. Empress Dowager Zhou eyed him suspiciously. It's not a girl from the Lan family? Then is it a girl from a family loyal to and trusted by them? Faintly, Li Chen replied, It's someone from Prince Chun's estate. 
Secondary Consort Ji and Secondary Consort Wei from Prince Chun's estate were conferred the ranks and title of Consort De and Consort Xian respectively. It is unnecessary for the Emperor to expend more effort, thought Empress Dowager Zhou. In addition, I haven't heard anything that suggests the Emperor likes any of the two but he has already sent away three tertiary consorts of the estate. Those of the concubine rank used to be palace maids, their identities too humble. Don't tell me the emperor hid that he received another woman from me. Before she could say anything, Li Chen said, Does imperial mother remember that when princess consort married in, a dowry escort followed her? Mm. Li Chen said, We intend to make the younger brother of the late princess consort, the adjutant of Prince Chun's estate, the empress. In a flash, the mood chilled. A good while later, Empress Dowager Zhou said rashly, Say that again. A smile graced Li Chen's lips. Imperial mother should know that five years ago, little Chi accompanied the princess consort into the estate. He has served Sun well, and has accumulated meritorious service in the northwest region. Later on, he took care of the princes and princesses in the estate. Our children respect and love him. Empress Dowager Zhou sighed deeply. Emperor, that's a man. M.M. We know. Emperor, you must understand the consequences of your actions should you go through with this, said Empress Dowager Zhou in a low voice. Li Chen glanced at the map on the table. His other, deeper thoughts could not be discerned. However, a thought suddenly rushed into Empress Dowager Zhou's mind. She glanced at Li Chen. Asked, do you really want to do this? Yes. Slowly, slowly, she nodded. The emperor still did not issue an imperial decree summoning his imperial concubines into the palace. Gradually, Consort Ji could not sit still anymore. But she could not consult with anyone, merely passing day after day in gloom. She heard that Consort Wei often invited her father to the estate, and wondered whether she should follow that example. Whether she should invite her father or mother over. Who would have thought that before she had even lifted a finger, Mistress Ji would rush to meet with her. The moment she saw her daughter, she blurted, Our estate is in trouble. What happened? Worried, Mistress Ji replied, Who else but your disappointing brothers? At once, Consort Ji understood. What happened to them? For some reason, those two evil creatures just had to do evil things. A few days ago, your second brother hid from me and your father that he went to the red light district and fought with other people for a prostitute. They caused a ruckus. We were supposed to observe the national mourning period, so the authorities took your second brother away. Did father not go to the capital's magistrate to have them let him out? There had been many young nobles from large and influential families rounded up from that affair. They made such a fuss that the whole capital knows about it. The capital's magistrate could not do any favors. Unexpectedly, after this, your third brother made some trouble. He lent money to someone with high interest, forcing that person to their death. Consort G paled. How could such a thing happen to our estate? Why would third brother lack money? It's all your father's fault, replied Mistress G in a ruthless manner. Your father forced them to study and cut off their monthly allowance. Who knows who led them astray but those two disappointing evil creatures set up that kind of shady business. He really forced someone to their death. Consort G was angered to the point of pain. What did father say? In a low voice, Mistress G said, I hate Ji Huan the most. Originally, your father wanted to send someone to plead leniency for your brothers but Ji Huan said that the new emperor had just ascended the throne and that he cannot be disturbed due to the families of his imperial concubines. Right now is the time when the emperor is showing his might. That even if we beg, it would be useless. At first, Consort Ji had still been furious at her younger brothers. But now, her anger had shifted to Ji Huan. He's looking forward to second brother and third brother doing poorly. Right now, he's an official of Hanlin Academy. My younger brothers can't compete with him in glory, yet he still fears their matters would affect him. 
Mistress G wiped her tears. I'm just a woman. I really don't know what to do. Firmly, Consort G said, Mother, go find someone. You need not have them rescue second and third brother. In any case, they are the emperor's relatives and the uncles of the eldest prince. The capital's magistrate is unlikely to go as far as not giving us face. Mother just needs to say that it is my intention. This was Mistress G's aim for coming here. She couldn't help but sigh. After a moment of thought, Consort G said, I'll write a note for Mother. Bring it when you go to get them. Good, good daughter. If it weren't for you, I wouldn't know what to do. In a grim manner, Consort G laughed. Ji Huan is waiting for us to be out of luck. I want him to see that with me around, nothing will happen to my younger brothers. After Li Chen had ascended the throne, noble imperial consort Yuan and her son grew completely quiet. It was clear that Prince Qing itched to leave the capital at once and return to his fief. He had committed a grave offense against the emperor. Not only that, he was not the emperor's full-blooded brother. If the emperor wanted to act against him, there was nothing he could do to stop it. Prince Qing was so impatient to leave that he couldn't sit still but he also couldn't think of an excuse that would allow him to leave quickly. There was only one person in the world whose mourning period lasted three months and that person was the emperor. Prince Qing and the others had to mourn for 27 months. Speaking of which, Prince Qing had been the one who committed the greatest offense against the emperor. However, he was not in a rush to leave, and instead, stayed in the capital as he observed the movements and current trends in silence. Starting who knew when, the court pushed out the idea of selecting an empress. At first, it was the civil officials who discussed this. Later on, people slowly started to write an official memorial to choose an empress. After Li Chen first received one to two memorials regarding this, he merely dismissed them with a smile. Following that, he realized this had already become the current trend in the court. Furthermore, the great majority of memorials pointed to making Consort Xian, formerly secondary Consort Wei, the Empress. Not only that, there were the cases regarding Consort Ji's two younger brothers. One day, those cases were suddenly mentioned in court. After ascending the throne, Li Chen practically did not have any free time. He naturally did not have the time to watch his former estate with care. As a result, he only discovered what had happened when the imperial censors presented petition after petition accusing Minister Ji of being too lax in managing his household. But what startled others the most came afterward. An official took out a short note that Consort De had written. Consort De's tone had been very threatening and she even referred to her two younger brothers as royal uncles as if she regarded herself as the mother of the world. Ji Han Song's thighs shook, and he was unable to even beg for forgiveness. Frowning, Li Chen said, Has Capital Magistrate finished investigating this matter yet? The Capital's Magistrate said, Reporting to Your Majesty, Upon investigation, these matters appear to be true. One of the Ji family's young masters broke the national mourning period and visited courtesans. The other forced someone to death. Calmly, Li Chen asked, What does the law say about how to treat this? Exile of 1,500 km. Cane them 50 times first, then exile them. Ji Hansong knelt on the ground, all hopes turning into dust. His two sons might not even survive being caned 50 times. If it wasn't for his good wife's meddling, how could things have gotten to this point? Another official said, Her Highness Consort De does not suit the De title. In your opinion, what should be done? Li Chen asked that official in an unhurried pace. When it came down to it, these were the Emperor's family matters. Seeing Li Chen's complexion, the official apologized and withdrew. The next time Qi Yunruo saw Li Chen again, more than ten days had passed already. As he was reading in his room, Li Chen suddenly walked in, startling Qi Yunruo. You! Smiling, Li Chen took a seat next to him. Qi Yunruo also smiled. You're not busy today. I wanted to see you. To which Qi Yunruo nodded. 
Are Jing Er and the others doing well? Very well. Jing Er misses you. Chi Yun Ruo pressed down his sadness. He did not continue speaking. Did anything happen in the estate? asked Li Chen. A moment of thought. I heard about what happened to Consort Ji's family. Your Majesty, how will you handle this? As in accordance to the law. He sighed. Unfortunately I didn't learned about this situation earlier. If it were only the descendants of the Ji family who were unsatisfactory, and it did not involve Consort Ji, this wouldn't have happened. This is not your fault, replied Li Chen. The members of the Ji family are truly too daring. Qi Yun Ruo nodded. Afterward, he didn't know what to say. Li Chen stared at him, their gazes meeting in silence. A good while later, Li Chen said, Little Qi. M.M. There's something I must prepare to do. What? Can I help you in any way? This matter does in fact require you. I can't do it myself. Qi Yun Ruo blinked and then he smiled. As long as it's something you need, I will do it. However, Li Chen did not continue on that topic. Instead, he asked, Little Qi, do you want to be an official? Qi Yun Ruo thought for a moment. I'm not sure. Maybe I would like it. But not being an official is fine, too. It's just that if I have nothing to do all day, I would be very bored. He guessed that Li Chen had encountered something difficult, that Qi Yun Ruo could not take up an official post. However, he didn't really care. From the beginning, what he wanted wasn't to be an official. No, it was to be of help to the prince. Li Chen nodded. He knew little Qi did not care about fame and profit. All of a sudden, Qi Yun Ruo recalled something. Recently, Consort Wei has invited her father over often. Again, Li Chen nodded. I already know. You do. Li Chen did not want to talk more about subjects touching upon selecting an empress. As he pleased, he said, what else happened in the estate? Qi Yun Ruo's mood grew gloomy. These past few days, Consort Ji kept asking me when they could enter the palace. His whole heart felt pained. Consort Ji and Consort Wei would each become a master of the palace, living honorably there. When Consort Ji had come to ask him when they would leave, she had been very arrogant. Qi Yun Ruo did not know the answer to this question, yet he also did not want to ask Li Chen for the answer. Li Chen looked at him, something deep flickering through his gaze that Qi Yun Ruo could not make out. He tried to avoid his line of sight but Li Chen held on to his cheeks so that Qi Yun Ruo would look straight at him. When do you want me to summon them into the palace? I. Qi Yun Ruo wanted to tell Li Chen that he didn't want them to ever enter the palace but in the end, he could only say, I don't know. Although Li Chen had ascended the throne no more than one and a half months ago, Qi Yun Ruo felt as though they had been apart for many years. His memories were no longer clear. He had once treated Li Chen as if they belonged to each other exclusively. Now, he lacked that confidence. Li Chen said, power can change many people. Like imperial father and grandmother's relationship. Like imperial father and imperial mother's relationship. Do you remember what I said in the past? That year, after Dixiu, Li Chen casually walked in front and he said this, when one climbs to the highest position, it is the most magnificent thing, yet also the most lonesome thing. Qi Yun Ruo's entire body shook. If even you won't tell me the truth, who would? Qi Yun Ruo shook his head, eager as he said, Your Majesty, I don't want to hide anything from you. It's just that I don't want to make things hard for you. Little Qi, if you don't want Consort Ji and Consort Wei in the palace, then they will never be able to enter it. All right. Your Majesty, I don't want it. I don't want to share you with anyone again. A deep sigh left Qi Yun Ruo's lips. Then he shouted, You once promised me this. When we were returning from the Northwest, you promised me this. Finally, Li Chen smiled from his heart. Actually, I've long since chosen someone to be my empress. Whole body stiffening, 
Chi Yunruo looked at him. In a flash, his heart was a mess of emotions but Li Chen continued, Little Chi, are you willing? Are you willing to receive the scorn of countless people, the raised eyebrows of the common folk, just to stay by my side as the Empress? Empress! All of a sudden, Chi Yunruo seemed to have returned to the northwest, the sound of a horn in the air, boundless yellow sand beyond the pass, fire beacons burning in the night. The prince mentioned his eldest sister and grandmother to him, and as they returned to the capital, the spring rain poured. The prince's clothes stuck to his skin from the moisture, and he said to him, You will regret this. At that time, what had been his own response? It had been this, I won't regret it. Your Majesty, this time, I still choose to be by your side. I won't regret it. End chapter Fei Pinying Jiang Chapter 73 Imperial Concubines After Li Chen had mentioned during court whom he wanted to make his empress, it sure enough gave rise to a commotion. Calmly, he listened as everyone in the palace hall reacted, from an initial buzz to the sound of them kowtowing and begging. Your Majesty, begging you to think of this more. Your Majesty, since ancient times, there has never been a male empress. Yet Li Chen replied in a dull manner, the ancients say, a dowry escort of the wife can become the new wife after the prior's passing. When we were still a prince of the first rank, we took Miss Chi as a wife, with her younger brother as the dowry escort. After Miss Chi passed away, the dowry escort should become the wife. Your Majesty, this is an old custom from hundreds, if not thousands, of years ago. Nowadays, no one follows it anymore. A gentleman must not have a concubine as a wife. Moreover, in wealthy and noble families at present, the status of a dowry escort cannot even compare to a concubine's. Li Chen smiled. Speaking of which, the saying a concubine cannot become a wife is a rule from the spring and autumn period. While Ji Huan watched as Li Chen countered each word of the civil and martial officials, Li Chen slowly declared that court had concluded. Ji Huan did not know how he ended up outside the Great Hall. A gust of cold wind cleared his mind. Once he had left the palace, he instructed his carriage driver to take him directly to the Crown Prince's estate. When Ji Huan saw Qi Yunruo, Qi Yunruo had just ordered the servants to take advantage of the sunny weather and bring the books outside to soak up some sun. Ji Huan asked, Do you know what the Emperor said in court today? Calmly, Qi Yunruo laughed. Yes. Ji Huan took a seat. A sigh left his lips. I was truly frightened today. Did they start to make a huge fuss today? It's not just making a fuss said Ji Huan. Once the emperor had said such words, everyone jumped from fear. After that, the senior officials of the Imperial Censorate and Hanlin Academy exploded. Thankfully, none of them tried killing themselves by slamming their heads into the pillars. Sir! Lolan rushed over in a panic. Sir, there's suddenly a large crowd of people outside the Crown Prince estate. They say they want to speak to you. Worried, Chi Huan looked at Chi Yunruo. However, Chi Yunruo merely said indifferently, Invite them to Lakeside View House. He rose to his feet. Chi Huan reached out for his hand and said, I'll accompany you there. No need. Brother Chi, I can take care of this myself. If Chi Huan appeared now, it was extremely possible others would think of him as a sycophant would think he paid no heed to the rules of the secular world, only caring about what the emperor wanted and supporting those views whether or not such views were good or evil. Chi Yunruo did not want to make things difficult for Ji Huan. But Ji Huan resolutely shook his head and said, Little Chi, right now, there is only me by your side. I can't hide. Although it was true that after Chi Yunruo had become the adjutant of the crown prince estate, he could represent the estate when going out, he had not gone outside to socialize with others that many times. Prince Chun's estate had closed its doors for half a year, and after Prince Chun became the crown prince, the more they maintained a low profile. What made it hard for others to forget Chi Yunruo was when Su Yuan searched the estate, 
and Chi Yunruo brought people to block the doors of Li Chen's inner study. Then evidence against Su Yuan was found and brought to the Imperial Palace. In the eyes of many people, especially the officials who knew the complete story about the case against Li Chen, Chi Yunruo was not only a male pet but also a resourceful family official. This family official and the emperor may share deep feelings but that did not mean he would be recognized by everyone. Wearing casual attire, Chi Yunruo made his way to the main chamber of Lakeside View House. The officials who had been invited in were already present, with the Minister of Rights, Sir Du, as the leader. They believed that Chi Yunruo wasn't an evil person. Their motive today was to urge him to back out of the situation, to make him take the initiative to tell the Emperor that he would not agree with his intention. Chi Yunruo swept his gaze through all of them. His current status naturally could not compete with those of the senior officials around. However, he was not required to salute them. He made his way to the seat of honor and sat down. He ordered, serve the tea. Just as Sir Du was about to open his mouth, he caught sight of Hanlin faculty member Ji Huan approaching slowly. He did not have much of a reaction, thinking Ji Huan was here with a similar objective as him. He said, Young Sir Ji, you have come as well. Ji Huan said in a candid way, this humble official will not conceal it from Sir Du. This humble official and adjutant Chi are friends. S.I. Du was startled. Realizing that Ji Huan wasn't on his side, he frowned. Young Sir Ji is also someone who has read the books of the sages. You are also in favor of the emperor taking a man as the empress. Ji Huan said, although it is the empress, in the end it is the emperor's wife. If the emperor wants to choose someone as his wife, there's no use talking about it. Another senior official shook his head, shaking his beard in the process. He gave Ji Huan a sideways glance. Young Sir Ji, if your father Sir Ji was around, would he approve of what you said? This person was in fact Ji Huan's superior. He was Hanlin Academy's deputy head. He had always shared a good relationship with great scholar Wen. Ji Huan smiled and said, Sir Zhao, this humble official is a court official. Since the emperor pays me, this humble official must work hard for him. What does that have to do with this humble official's father? The maidservants finished serving the tea, and Chi Yunruo dismissed them. Then the senior officials remembered that they weren't here to argue with Ji Huan. Rather, it was to have Chi Yunruo tell the emperor that he disagreed with his intention. Sir Du coughed lightly. We are actually here to see Adjutant Chi. A smile appeared on Chi Yunruo's lips. This humble official has not paid a visit to Yusur's estates in the past. Hanlin Deputy Head Zhao was unwilling to talk about anything else, and said straight on, daring to ask Adjutant Chi if you knew the Emperor would make a man like you the Empress. Chi Yunruo glanced at him and found him familiar. After Ji Huan secretly nodded to him, Chi Yunruo knew that this person had been present during Brother Ji's congratulatory banquet. He said, this humble official naturally knows. Then do you approve of this decision? A few officials looked his way. Calmly, Chi Yunruo said, naturally, this humble official approves. Preposterous. Yes, such a thing is truly unheard of. Right Sir Chiu. An official with a pale face free of facial hair said, of course. In this world, who would take a male wife? To actually. But then he felt it wasn't good to comment on the emperor's matters, only ruthlessly saying, what kind of practice is this? Chi Yunruo drank a sip of tea and watched as the main chamber of Lakeside View House burst into uproar at once. Puzzled, he said, why are you gentlemen so concerned about what's between this humble official and his majesty? This isn't just your private matter. This involves the whole country. Adjutant Chi, said Minister Du, interjecting his peer. Then he said in a serious manner, this matter isn't as simple as you think. His Majesty's wife isn't the same as a regular household's mistress. She would be the mother of the world, and should treat everyone as her children, teaching them all, he sighed. Speaking of which, this humble official has heard some things about you. At the Northwest, 
you served the emperor and even killed Qiang warriors. In Xinyuan country, you experienced dangers and escaped by yourself. Minister Du smiled somewhat self-mockingly. As a matter of fact, you have more achievements than us useless scholars, before he even finished speaking, he received displeased gazes from the group of people with him. Minister Du is overpraising me, said Qi Yunruo. Minister Du wiped his sweat and continued, This humble official admires your contributions but is uncertain whether you have considered the following. The current emperor has great ability, wisdom, and strategy. In a hundred years, historians would write down His Majesty's numerous achievements one by one. But it's also extremely possible the emperor would walk down another path, and later generations would call him, call him a tyrannical monarch. Minister Du's face was covered in cold sweat. Such words were very disrespectful. The officials who had spoken fiercely before lowered their heads one after the other. Feeling uneasy, Ji Huan glanced at Qi Yunruo. He was worried that he would be frightened. Yet, Qi Yunruo said in a stern tone, This humble official dares to ask Sir Du if you think it best that the emperor conformed to old customs, becoming a monarch that resembled a Tang dynasty emperor or Emperor Wu of Han. Forgive this humble official's boldness, but in that case, would you gentlemen have the opportunity to become Tianfen or Wei Zheng? these important ministers whose names are recorded in history? However, is this what the emperor wants? Aren't you all just pushing your beliefs onto him? Cold as ice, Hanlin deputy head Zhao said, then according to your words, you don't want the emperor to be a wise sovereign. Qi Yunruo also coldly said, this humble official doesn't see how making me the empress would conflict with the emperor becoming a wise sovereign. Minister Du held on to Hanlin deputy head Zhao, who still wanted to ask questions. A light sigh escaped from his lips. We came here originally to persuade you, that perhaps you would care more about reputation than him. But it seems we shouldn't have come. Minister Du's words were comparatively more genial. Qi Yunruo said to him warmly, Sir Du, you all know that it is a heinous crime to comment on the emperor. Or do you think the emperor doesn't know how serious wanting to make me the empress is? In such a difficult affair, his majesty does not even have one supporter. If I pull back, the emperor would truly become alone. Today, if this humble official offended you, please do not take it to heart. It's merely that this humble official cannot agree with you all. Minister Du nodded. He thought, when all is said and done, Officials like us cannot win against the Emperor's insistence. If there truly comes a day when the Empress coronation takes place, I will likely be the one managing it. There is no precedent of a Minister of Rights like myself being against the Emperor's Empress candidate, while also preparing for the presentation of the Empress. After Ji Huan had left, Qi Yunruo remained alone in Lakeside View House drinking tea. Li Chen and the children were not present. So in his opinion, there was no difference between living in Ink Lotus Courtyard and living in Lakeside View House. But a moment later, Consort Ji rushed in screaming, Where is Ji Huan? With indifference, he replied, Brother Ji just left. Consort Ji looked at Ji Yunruo. She had yet to know about the shocking matter that had just occurred in the court. Just the affairs of her two younger brothers were enough to vex her. Consort Ji said, just when is the emperor summoning us into the palace? Once she was there, she would have the opportunity to meet the emperor and plea for leniency. But Qi Yunruo remained silent, causing consort Ji to tremble with fear. Will the emperor demote me? Qi Yunruo stayed silent for a while, before moving his train of thought from the people earlier to what was happening now. Consort Ji, right after the emperor ascended the throne, you brought shame against his name. Originally, Consort Ji had been resentful toward her younger brothers, but once she heard Ji Huan's name, she transferred her resentment to him. A moment ago, Consort Ji had been nervous but after hearing Qi Yunruo's words, her apprehension vanished completely, transforming into overbearing rage as she walked to him. Adjutant Qi. What kind of qualifications do you have to say this? No matter what, this is between the Emperor and myself. 
It has nothing to do with you. Chi Yunruo had a headache. Consort Chi, please don't cause any more trouble. The harem must not interfere with court politics. Currently, the emperor does not have time to deal with you. Chi Yunruo. Chi Yunruo and Consort Chi were both startled from the voice that was of Consort Wei. With the support of her servant girl's hand, Consort Wei shook with anger. Indeed, her whole body was trembling. Chi Yunruo furrowed his brows. Yet Consort Ji subconsciously found it laughable. Apparently, she did not know why Consort Wei wanted to yell at Chi Yunruo. As if she had not seen Consort Ji, Consort Wei shook off Xiao Qiao's hand after entering the room. Slowly, she made her way before Chi Yunruo, tone cold as ice, a hiss of chill escaping. He sat on a chair as Consort Wei faintly bent down, gaze filled with an unprecedented gloominess and coldness. Chi Yunruo, you truly are capable. Chi Yunruo looked at her, tranquil in his action. Even Consort Ji could see something was wrong. Younger sister Consort Wei, what happened? What happened? Consort Wei sneered again and again. Elder sister. From the way you look, you must not know but our emperor is already preparing to establish an empress. Consort Ji fell into a daze. It appeared as if the future empress was not herself or Consort Wei. In a frantic manner, Consort Ji turned to look at Chi Yunruo. Is it someone you recommended? Consort Wei stood up straight, looking at Consort Ji with a sneer. No. Elder sister, the person His Majesty is preparing to make his empress is him she jabbed a finger toward Chi Yunruo. You didn't hear this wrong. The emperor would rather confer a man the position of empress. Consort Ji screamed, shrill to the ears, this can't be possible. Never had Consort Wei provoked anyone on the surface. She had wholeheartedly schemed to become the empress, persuading her father to have the officials recommend her. Yet, who would have thought that shortly after, she would receive the news? The emperor had never seen her as a choice to begin with. It had also never crossed his mind to take a new main consort from an influential and large family. Instead, he wanted to make Chi Yunruo the empress. Before she could take revenge with him for seizing her son, hatred had already swallowed up her heart. Losing all reason, she had traveled to Lakeside View House. Consort Wei, your information network is truly quick and effective. Chi Yunruo's gaze fell upon her. Unfortunately, you underestimated me. Consort Wei sobbed as she cried out, Right now, how can I underestimate you? I have served the emperor for seven years. Seven years. What did I do wrong? Why can't the emperor like me? She was too engulfed in hatred. She hated her own humble background, hated that her parents sent her to Prince Chun's estate, hated that Consort Ji gave birth to a son first, hated Chi Nikon's identity as the principal consort, hated Chi Yunruo for capturing the emperor's heart, hated that she schemed for so many years in vain. Looking at Chi Yunruo, Consort Ji proved stiff as she asked, Is what Consort Wei said true? Chi Yunruo returned her gaze. Yes. What she said was true. Consort Ji, do you have any objections? Consort Ji could only sob and wail just like Consort Wei but she did not say another word. Apart from the concubines who taught the prince the matters of the flesh, and the former palace maids who followed him from the palace, Consort Ji had been Li Chen's first woman. She was the first concubine that could be considered a master in Prince Chun's estate. She was even favored solely once. This was something even the princess consort hadn't achieved. When Ji Han Song became the minister of war, consort Ji did not feel like there was any difference in status between her and the princess consort. As long as the prince supported her, how could she herself not become the princess consort? The first person consort Ji hated was Ji Huan. After he took away the prince's attention toward her, the prince never looked at her again. The second person she hated the most was Chi Yunruo. After the prince grew fond of him, he no longer liked anyone else. However, Consort Ji still held some hope in her heart all along. 
she was the emperor's first. She was different from the others after all. But everything that happened just now shattered her dreams. Consort Ji could not put to words what she was feeling. Chi Yunruo said, Don't worry. The emperor will not demote you. But that means I will be living in the cold palace for the rest of my life. Consort Ji had never been as clear of her situation as she was now. She did not pay attention to the sobbing and wailing Consort Wei, leaving Lakeside View House. Consort Wei recalled nine years ago, when she wore wedding attire the color of red roses, entering the prince estate through the side door. She had been fifteen, terrified and uneasy, sitting in the bridal chamber in a daze alone, letting her imagination run wild. It was uncertain how long she waited when light footsteps sounded in approach, the person lifting her veil. Consort Wei muttered, Why did I just have to lose to you? A long time ago, you and Consort Ji were people who had moved the Emperor's heart, said Qi Yunruo with an air of indifference. You two had touched his heart. I remember when he had first announced that he would be going off to battle, you all chatted and laughed with him. Then I entered the room. He turned to look at you, at Consort Ji, and at Princess Consort. And his gaze had carried a smile. Perhaps even for tertiary Consort Li, who had committed a mistake in the past, and for Brother Ji, and for Ying Chu, who had attended to the Emperor for many years. One must be sincere to receive sincerity. Consort Wei, you also have never loved the Emperor. For your status, you did many things. Things that the Emperor has known since a long time ago. Perhaps it was when you manipulated Eunuch Qian to punish you and Bao, causing Princess Consort to blame me. Or perhaps it was when you instigated Tertiary Consort Li to harm Eldest Miss that the Emperor's affection toward you died. Consort Wei raised her head to look at him. Do you know why the Emperor put up with you time after time? She stared blankly for a good while before saying apathetically, it's because of father's prestige among the scholars and the other is to not cause a stain on Muir's reputation due to his mother. Chi Yunruo's gaze was filled with pity. Consort Wei glanced at him. She no longer knew what she was feeling. After a good while, a bitter smile spread across her lips. Who would have guessed you'd have this kind of outcome? That's right. Who could have foreseen it? Chi Nikan, who had already passed away, the always domineering Ji Ro and the shrewd and reserved Wei Qiang, which of them had thought that the short and small Qi Yunruo they had first seen back then, who could not compare to any of them, would have this outcome? At that time, he wore clothes of the most common blue shade, not a word leaving his lips. When Qi Nikan ordered it, he would kneel before them and pay respects. They were unable to regard him as an enemy, their hearts holding scorn toward him. But now, even if the people sending Consort Wei news spoke of the senior court officials fighting against the Emperor's decision, she knew that once he decided on something, he could not be stopped by any means. Now, Qi Yunruo was, in fact already the Empress. Consort Wei kneeled before Qi Yunruo. She kowtowed. To which he only looked at her in an ordinary manner. All my life. I had wished to be a principal consort but I will never fulfill this dream for the rest of my life. I beg of you to treat Muir well. Consort Wei cowed out again. I only wish, only wish that after many years, the Emperor would not recall these shameful things when thinking about me. Her every hope had turned to dust, all her efforts was in vain. She cowed out for the final time. There was a smile on her lips yet, tears kept flowing from her eyes. I know that His Majesty will never allow us into the palace. Therefore, I will congratulate your ascension as Empress here, Your Majesty the Empress. Qi Yunruo closed his eyes and took a deep and drawn out sigh. The Crown Prince's residence was the Eastern Palace. If an Imperial Prince other than the Crown Prince ascended the throne, that Imperial Prince's previous residence would be known as the residence of the Emperor before his ascension. Although Li Chen was conferred the title of Crown Prince in the end, he never lived in the Eastern Palace. So, his Crown Prince estate now resembled a residence of the Emperor before his ascension, and must not be given to anyone else. Perhaps it might become a temple, 
or a place to offer sacrifices to the gods and ancestors. The Crown Prince estate opened its doors to accept visitors like in the past. Those officials' plan of persuading Chi Yunruo to talk to the Emperor and change his mind proved fruitless. After they had left the Crown Prince estate, Hanlin Deputy Head Zhao suddenly said, it's the fault of the father to raise yet not educate his children. Since we can't talk sense into him, we will go to Count Ziang. Count Ziang is the father of the previous princess consort. If he says anything, the emperor and Qi Yutse will listen. But this humble official has heard that Count Ziang and Qi Yutse don't have a good relationship. Hanlin deputy head Zhao said, filial piety is the most important thing. If Qi Yutse truly is an unfilial person, it's even more important that we fight his coronation as empress. In an unhurried pace, Minister Du said, I won't participate in this affair anymore. If you want to go to Count Ziang, then do it. I will not accompany you all. End chapter